Mark is a full stack, Tekken Son family, bull mastiff guy, and a sports guy. He just came back from my hometown, Adelaide, and you said you beat South Australia, right? Yeah, national. So, game. I mean, national inline hockey. Um, I won't hold it against him because he's speaking, but enjoy the talk. Cheers. <laughs> All right, so who's here to actually listen to me today? Because if you fall asleep, just tell me and I can stop and we can all go home early. Well, not before Matt's talk. Um, so my name is Mark Babic, or Babich, if you want to go full Euro. Um, I have been in the industry for like 15 years. Um, I just, open source for me is the way to go, hands down. I am currently a CTO for a company, but I will jump into any role that looks interesting to me. So I've done DevOps, I've done UI, I've done graphic design originally, um, and yeah, that's what I do. Um, so one of my other things I love to do is I love to mentor and I love to talk. A lot of my friends will tell me I talk too much, that's why they fall asleep. So. And my button doesn't work. Give me two seconds, because I didn't focus. All right. I still didn't focus. Here we go. Yay! So, migrating to Laravel, managing the ick. Who here gets to start on brand new Laravel projects from scratch? You lucky, lucky people. All right. <laughs> Who here walks into existing frameworks or existing companies where they've got either bespoke or who knows what other frameworks? I'm focusing on CodeIgniter for this talk. Hands up, please. Yeah, you guys are just like me. Who, who, which one of those guys have gone home, zero sleep, crying? <laughs> Usually crying is preceded by yelling. So. When it comes to uh, developing and migrating out of like, old frameworks, the hardest thing you always have to do is convince people to want to do it. Um, probably the worst thing you can do is say to your boss or product owner, I want to rewrite this. <laughs> the best word you can actually use is, I wish to refactor this. <laughs> because all we're doing when we're refactoring is we're rewriting with, without them knowing. So. This is my approach to how I like to refactor old applications. I look at when you go into an organization where you're the new guy and they've hired you to come in and solve their problem. It could be scalability, it could be just downright their data models bog, who knows. Um, I look at it as when you break up with someone. And so these are the seven stages of a breakup. First stage, but why? I thought everything was going all right. That's usually the question, yeah? <laughs> and you search and you search, like, why? But in this instance, it's like you go, you're, you're coming in as the, new, as the new girl or boy, and you're saying, but why? And it's literally, but why? I've walked into some, some applications where the whole application is a one PHP file that's 9,000 lines long as a WordPress <laughs> plugin. But why? And you still need to argue the point to go and do change. So that's the next sort of thing that we come up with, denial. No, 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 it's all right, it's all right. Well, it's not all right. Um, I think one of the biggest keys when you go to, to migrating out and manage the ick, you've got to manage the managers um, and actually convince them. And just saying, I want to rewrite to Laravel or any other framework that you want to write to is not enough. You need to come up with hard facts. In my instance, CodeIgniter 2.2 recently that I've walked into, which I think was released 2015. It's on PHP 5.6, which is about to be end of life, and well, it's PHP 5.6. Um, you need to go in with hard, solid facts, and you're not going to win straight away, so you really need to convince the uppers that this is the way to go, and you can't just say, because I say so. You really have to focus on your sort of negotiation techniques. Bargaining, this is the next stage. 
So you've just broken up and you're like, oh, well, come on, why don't we stick with this? Why don't we stick with that? That doesn't work either. Well, it can work sometimes, but the bargaining point is when you walk in and say, okay, we'll stick with this and we'll do a slow progression out. And this is where eventually we'll see the methodology that I like to use, which allows that bargaining point. But then there's the relapse. You finally convinced them, we're going to start doing this. We're going to start migrating out to Laravel. We're going to start using Vue.js. We're going to start using Redis and all this kind of stuff. We've still got a very terrible data model. Um, and well, then you relapse because you get a little bit into it and you go, this is too hard. Um, and that could be from many instances. It could be all your dependencies that you have in a project. It could be that you've walked into a bespoke project. Uh, one example I've actually seen is an entire database where every single like value of the database in every row is encrypted. <laughs> yeah, and that's when I went back to the denial or the first stage. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, and I did actually ask, and the developer said, I'm very new, I was working on security, and this is how you secure a database. <laughs> not, not uncertain to that, that he actually had in this public root the PHP file with the encryption keys coded in it. Uh, and he wrote a little nice eloquent style wrapper where you write your string value in in your normal query, it performs the method, and as it writes it, it decides to encrypt every value, but then it also gets every value out and decrypts it in the code base. So I showed that I could just scrape your entire database with a SQL injection attack, and you've given me the encryption keys. That's where anger comes in. <laughs> this is where you're like, well, Insert all your expletives here. Um, my coworker Abel is in the is in the room right now, and he's heard quite a few expletives since he's been working with me. So, anger is when you get so frustrated that you just don't understand. You want to throw everything out the window, be it your laptop, be it your phone, be it yourself. Um, <laughs> but I think this is the key where, if you are convincing to go there and you have anger, and we can't always. Uh, keep it inside, it's best to keep it under control because when you do anger, then that's when usually you don't do your refactoring correctly. Step number six, the initial acceptance. So this could be seen as, okay, we started migrating, we're finally going and you're making progress, there's gonna be some hiccups along the way, but everyone's starting to get on board and that's when you're sort of almost to the point of, well, we are gonna migrate out of this old code base and then the redirected hope. This is like the new love. This is where oh, we're in Laravel now and we're all happy, happy families. But in this whole point, like this whole stage of the breakup and you're doing this, especially in an enterprise application where you don't have build from scratch, it's how you manage your change to your clients as well. Because if you've got a client base out there, especially at an enterprise level and you're doing all this work underneath, like how do you do this work without affecting your user base? Because I know that I don't want like 10,000 support calls the next day when we do a rollout. So this starts with infrastructure. The biggest key when you come into an old project and you want to rebuild is you need to get control of your infrastructure, be it from your dev environment, your test and what's in prod. Um, one of the key things in doing this is virtualization. So Vagrant, we've talked about that. Everyone knows about Docker. My preference is Docker, but it can be done in Vagrant. Um, you don't test on a Windows machine in a, like a LAMP stack or XAMP or whatever it is. Well, it used, I can't even remember it was that old since I've used it. And then push into a Unix environment in prod. It just doesn't work. So one of the little tricks that I like to do, and this is part of the whole migration process, is, well, use Nginx to just fake it until we make it. So this is an example of... Um, how I currently use in prod for a, for a migration system. So we have our two upstreams, the CI, which is Code Igniter, and then we have Laravel. They're both running in Nginx. They're both running in individual containers with a PHP 5.6 and a PHP 7.2. So I can use Laravel 5.6 or 5.7 with the old Code Igniter. Every request that comes in, so this is part of the hybrid release approach. Every request that comes in that starts with API or OAuth, I pump that off to Laravel. And I get Laravel's passport out of the box, 
all the API stuff there. Everything else gets dumped to CodeIgniter with whatever they did there. And this is part of the progression. This is how you sort of get off in a way. So, and part of that will be Vue.js, which I'll talk about shortly. But this is the key, controlling of your data model. No matter what approach you do, if you have no control over your data model, like you've got business logic in your controllers, get that shit out of there. You've got business logic in your JavaScript, like validation, like why not, why is it there? Because that's just real secure. Um, when you have control of your data model, that's when you can start to just break everything else, because if everything else breaks, as long as your data model controls what goes where and all your validation, then you can't pollute your database, which is the biggest nightmare you can actually have when you're doing these sort of migrations. So, we've got control of our data model. How do we do that? Well, Matt Stalfa has actually produced, and it's funny, I talked to him about this, and he's gone through the same process with a code in to Laravel. He's produced Laravel Torch, and has anyone seen Laravel Torch before? Nobody's, okay, you should look at this project because it takes the coolest bits of Laravel and allows you to use them separate. So you can do a retrofit to CodeIgniter and start using Eloquent in there. You can get rid of CodeIgniter's really bad templating system and start using Blade. Um, and then, so with your data model, you can create your data model on your database and then inject it into CodeIgniter so you can progressively remove CodeIgniter's model dependencies, which from my experience are always these handwritten SQL queries, 100 lines with all these conditionals that just write really poor SQL and really bad performance. So, you've got your data model in Eloquent, how do you use it in these two frameworks? The easiest way to do it is basically just set up a composer package. And you can actually, and I've done it, you can actually, and I'm gonna open source it after this so you guys can play around with it if you want to. Um, you can actually convert CodeIgniter 2 point whatever into with a little bit of work into a composer dependency. So then your, your CodeIgniter project gets the benefit of using Composer. Then you can use Eloquent models because the base code, code of an Eloquent model, you just gotta make sure that you don't use PHP 7 syntax, but most of it you don't have to, and then it gets injected into Illuminate 5.4, and for the 5.6 PHP environment, and then you can use the latest stuff, well, get all the performance benefits out of Illuminate in 7.1. Um, so you've got control of the model, and you can use it in both areas, and you just basically, it's just the painstaking task of step-by-step step, pulling bits of logic out and just moving it across. And this is where Vue.js comes into play. Or Angular, or anything that makes an API request, like using, using any sort of, act, like, excuse me, using like jQuery, you can even do this as well. So the whole point when it comes down to migrating, instead of doing all the work in the server side in the coding night area, you just build an API, and your own app uses the API. And I'll show you some code examples of what I mean, but when you have your API set up, then it doesn't matter what happens on the underside of Code Igniter, and basically you just start deleting code out of Code Igniter, and it makes you feel better every day. And you just minimize Code Igniter's usage to the point where controllers are just one-liners which just spit out of view, and then your Vue.js does anything. The only thing you have to inject is maybe a token. And how do you get that token? The methodology that I use to actually get a token from Laravel to say that I'm actually an authenticated user is CodeIgniter with its session handling, it needs to set it. So I do the password request to CodeIgniter. I do, I use Laravel Passport and do a server-side request to Laravel's API to say, well, can I authenticate? If I get a valid token back, then yeah, you, you're valid in Laravel, so you must be valid in CodeIgniter. Then inject that token in your interface, then every other API request you make from your web views, well, they're gonna be la authenticated with Laravel. And now, the next thing that we come to. So, we've got the Halloumi model here. The database table for this was created, so this is part of the new app that's coming out very shortly. Um, inspired by Wednesday night called Halloumi Finder, where everyone puts in their best Halloumi, wherever they find a good bit of Halloumi, they just put it in there and it pings Matt Stauffer's Twitter page straight away, so anywhere in the world he can get Halloumi. He's never had Halloumi before, it was, yeah, 
It's one of the biggest, it's probably one of my highlights of the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the times when you come into bespoke frameworks, you will have data models that aren't nice and pretty the way Laravel does it. So when you create eloquent models and migrations in Laravel, you get the nice table names, you get the standardized IDs. I deal a lot with this on a day-to-day -day basis, currently, previously, or ever, because a lot of those databases are handwritten SQL builds without any migrations or anything. So the standard way you would do this is Halloumi extends your model, and then you'd set up your table and your primary key. Now, this is cool, but then what happens in your view layers, on your, if you're doing it through server-side or if you're doing any other access, you either have to know that it's got HID as a primary key, or you use the get key method. Now, the get key method's perfectly fine, but I like to do a little bit of this stuff. So I create a custom model, which is gonna be my legacy model. I extend Eloquent, get all its beautiful stuff out of it. And I just do an attribute accessor. And then I just call whatever the primary key is. So then I can use, in my views on the PHP side, whoa, wrong button, whoa, again. So that's my favorite GIF at the moment. <laughs> um, again. <laughs> Let's go. All right, here we go. So I can find my model, be it in Laravel, be it in CodeIgniter, and then I can just use yummy ID, because Halloumi is yummy, apparently. So, but I can still use get key, and I can still use the base primary table. So what this allows us to do is create our eloquent models, replace all our model calls in CodeIgniter without having to modify too much on the CodeIgniter side as far as refactoring. But then you can go through the CodeIgniter side, find and replace all these capital ID calls and replace them with just ID, and you're sort of building what your model wants to be. And so this is the next sort of tip I have. Use, and this is where the ick actually comes in. So you feel dirty because you're not changing your database straight away, but that's probably the least of your concern when it comes to getting out of a legacy framework. So um, attribute accesses and mutators, like they save your life. So another example is a user table where by standard you'd have first name, last name, but it's name underscore first, name underscore last. But you want, you want to sort of get away from that. You want to go to the first name, last name, so you'd create an accessor, which is first name, and you'd pull out the attribute, which is name underscore first, and you'd set your mutator. So that way you can start working with what you want your API to be is if you've done a from scratch build, and then once you're all across, you can go and adjust the database table with minimal sort of effort and then pull it out. And the way that I like to add these sort of things in, because I know that they're not going to be permanent, is I just create a trait. Like, it's just PHP at the end of the day, it's just OO. Create a trait with all your accesses and mutators in it, just throwing it up the top, and then that way you know that, well, this model is using this trait, you can go in there and look at it. And then you can also write tests, and that's the big benefit. You can start writing tests for all your relations. If you have um, mutators that set custom IDs based on the primary key and, some, and like a dot model name so, and a project number, you can write that in events and you don't have to write all that custom logic in your controllers when you save, so you can just pull that stuff out. So, that's that step. Now, let's get like, migrating to Laravel. So we've got our model under control, we're starting to pull stuff out of CodeIgniter, we've got everything to Laravel. This is where you start to, like, so in, before I move on, in those legacy frameworks that you walk into, how many are test coveraged? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have to be, otherwise I cry. <laughs> this is where migrating to Laravel is one of the big things. This is how I usually sell it to my management, to whoever I'm coming into. You don't have tests now. Moving this way, you'll get test coverage. You get quicker release. You get better stability. And when things break, you just re write your regression tests and go. So how many people here actually do test-driven development? How many people here have actually done Adam Watham's test-driven development course? Yeah. If you haven't, I would get onto that because that's how I learned. 
even Jeffrey Way's um, Laracar site, the way those two guys explain it, it makes that sort of building to actually start testing a lot less scary. And you just build as you go. And I like their approach of build your features and just drop down to the unit level when you need to. And most of the time you don't have to write many unit level tests. Once you've got your model tested in that way and you start building your API endpoints, then well, Laravel, you can use all your feature tests to do that as well. So any request that comes in, you start to know that, well, if I save a new Halloumi record into my database, the API deals with that. And then the other side effect of that is once you've got an API, you can go mobile and then you go viral. And then you're all, it just basically everything's set. Um, and if you go mobile with a native framework or if you're using Vue.js um, and Ionic is actually a pretty cool hybrid framework if you're just doing data display and capture. Um, and I think Ionic 4, which will be released very soon, they've moved to web components and you'll be able to use Vue.js in there. So you create your Vue.js UI kit for your application, make it responsive and you can just drop it into both. So your web platform and your Ionic mobile. And with your API that you've built to migrate out of CodeIgniter, straight away you got access. And if you're using Laravel Passport, you've got auth access, which is even better. So that's how we start migrating to Laravel. And eventually, so the other approach, if you use Blade templating standalone in your code igniter and you're refactoring all your templates, you can just pick it up and drop it straight into Laravel with a little bit of tinkering at the end of the day without having to worry about another whole set of refactoring. So this is the next thing I want to talk about, which I only just worked out. I thought about it and worked it out like a couple of weeks ago and it actually made me feel a little bit weird, but it actually works. So who's used Laravel Dusk? Who knows of Laravel Dusk? Cool, we all know. So one of the biggest problems about migrating out of a legacy framework with no test coverage, we can write our integrations and features and units and all that kind of stuff, but we don't have browser testing. Um, who here with a legacy framework has had actual valid documentation for a user interface? <laughs> This is the other big problem about when you do migrations. You don't have user documentation or even application documentation. You don't know what it's supposed to do. You just make a guess from what you point and click. With Laravel Dusk, those point and click guesses that you make that seem to be working, at least you can automate those tests. And um, that way when you migrate across to your API architecture and redo your front end, if the test fails, you know you've broken it royally. Um, but what I've got here is the way that Dusk runs is when you run a Dusk test, it actually replaces the environment file with a .env Dusk file. So if you have a test database, it'll do that. They're a bit slower, so you just use them at sort of like your acceptance phase. Um, but with the architecture that I have, where I've got CodeIgniter and Laravel running like this, how do I run Dusk tests when my UI isn't actually in Laravel, it's in CodeIgniter. That's what this is. So I've created this I'll create a trait and I'm going to release all this so you guys can poke around and play around and use it if you want, abuse it if you want, tell me I'm wrong, I love it. So PHP unit you have these annotations, so before class is basically every time a class runs it'll do something. And I actually had to just dive into the Laravel dust stuff to figure out how they swap it out. Um, so our CI path and our Laravel path are just helpers to figure out in my development environment, this is where I physically sit on my local system for CodeIgniter and Laravel. And what I end up doing, so I don't have to do duplication, I pick up the environment, fi environment file and I just swap it out before Dusk runs. And then Dusk will run, because it just runs in the URL, it'll run on your local host, you'll actually hit the CodeIgniter front end and it'll do all the actions to go through to the back end. So you actually test CodeIgniter front end with your Laravel back end with browser testing. And that saves your life when you're actually migrating out. Ooh, I did it again. All right. This is the next part of it. What happens after your Dusk test is done because you physically change your environment file. This will revert it back and that's actually the easy part. And then this is the next bit. So 
When you do um, HTTP tests in Laravel, you can sign in as a user. So you create a user out of your factory and you can sign in. It's a bit different when you're dealing with Passport because you've got to sort of like, oh, I'm actually using Passport, I want to log in as that. It's even more different when you're using it with a Code Igniter front end that how does it know that you actually need to log in like that? Because Code Igniter needs a token to do all its browser requests through view or anything. That's what this sort of does. So the Laravel Passport ID, the Laravel Passport secret, you can just put that into your PHP unit file and just create random things. And then this configure Laravel Passport before your dust test will actually create an entry in your database table that then you can send through to your Code Igniter, which that's why I've got the Laravel Passport ID and Passport secret because that's in my environment file so Code Igniter will know what that wants to be. So I'm just basically simulating it. The next thing is hashing a password. So that's our awesome hashing algorithm. And I have seen hashing algorithms sort of like this. Um, the reason why I do this, if you've got a user factory and you just put a random password in, I don't care what the raw password file is going to be, but I need to make sure that what I save into my user and what I pass through to my browser is going to be identical. So I just go, well, whatever your user password currently is, I quickly hash it into something that I know I've got because then when I go to log in as, I can configure my Laravel Passport client, hash my password, which is already stored, then I can pass my raw text password through to the browser, and that's how we actually, and the pause 1000 is basically, so on this front end test that I was doing, I've got a view component that will actually do an AJAX call, so I'm just waiting for that to complete and then continue. And this works, and I will put up a repo where you can clone it, play with it, and just see how it works. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much that's what that's pretty much um, a lot of the strategies I use. If you have any questions, um, I'm more than happy to take questions. If you are completely confused and dumbfounded, that's probably just my delivery. <laughs> so, um, are there any questions about this approach? No. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. So. My name is Mark Babick. Thank you for listening for me, to me, and um, yeah, have a have a good conference. Thanks, Mark.